This video is going to be about linear electron flow. So linear electron flow is going to be the path that the electrons take through these photosystem molecules to eventually end up in the Calvin cycle. So the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to have a photon of light that will come in and it excites one of the electrons in a chlorophyll molecule in the light harvesting complex of photosystem 2. So when that happens, that electron goes up to the excited state, and then as it falls back down to the ground state, an electron in a nearby chlorophyll atom will get excited to the excited state. And so by doing that, they're able to pass along this energy through all of these chlorophyll molecules and then eventually pass them to the P680 chlorophyll A molecules in their reaction center complex. So when that happens, one of their electrons will get excited and picked up by the primary electron acceptor. But now we have this hole on these P680 molecules that needs to be filled by an electron. So where those electrons are going to come from is from the splitting of water. So chloroplasts are going to be splitting water, and so when they do that, it frees up these electrons that can then be used to replace the electron that we just uh, lost in the P680 chlorophyll molecules. And so additionally, when that happens, we free up protons that we're then going to pump into the thylakoid space. So the photosystems and all of these other components are located in the thylakoid membrane. And so we're going to pump these protons into the thylakoid space to create a proton gradient that we can then use to do work later on. So from this primary electron acceptor, the electrons are going to move into a small electron transport chain. So the first molecule that they're going to go to is plastoquinone. So plastoquinone um, and these other components are going to help to pump additional protons into the thylakoid space to make an even larger proton gradient so we can do more work. So from plastoquinone, we're going to go to cytochrome C, or just cytochrome complex, actually. And then from the cytochrome complex, we're going to go to plastocyanin. And so we're going to stop right there for just a second and so go over to photosystem 1. So in photosystem 1, we have a very similar process happening. So we're going to have a photon of light that hits one of these chlorophyll molecules and excites its electrons. And then we'll see that excitement get passed on to the other, other chlorophyll molecules before it goes to the P700 chlorophyll molecules in the reaction center complex. So again, an electron will get excited and picked up by the primary electron acceptor. And so again, we have this hole here that needs to be filled by an electron. So over in photosystem two, that hole was filled by the splitting of water. But in photosystem one, we're going to use the electron that we've passed through this electron transport chain to fill that hole. And so that is really how the electrons move from photosystem two to photosystem one is through this connection with um, the P700 chlorophyll A molecules. So now the excited electron in the primary electron acceptor is going to be passed on to another electron transport chain. But this electron transport chain doesn't pump any protons, so it's not going to contribute to the proton gradient or ATP formation at all. So the first molecule it will go to is a molecule called ferredoxin. And then from there, it will go to an NADP plus reductase. And so this NAD plus uh, reductase is going to use these electrons to reduce NADP plus to NADPH. So there, then from there, this NADPH will go to the Calvin cycle to complete the process of photosynthesis. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.